Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff with ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week what I thought we'd do is take a look at server security. And so once you get your server set up and you've got it uh, accessible from the internet, again assuming that's how you did it, if you did a, a dot .local or a dot .private, uh, if you've done dot .local, you can only access your server in your local network. If you did dot .private, uh, you can access your network remotely, but only through uh, the VPN port. So you've got a, a different layer of security. But for those of you that uh, maybe have a registered domain, like a dot .com or dot .net, and you've uh, opened up your server uh, with all the different services so that you can access them remotely, uh, server security comes up. And so what, what do we need to do to keep your server secure? So I thought what we'd do is take a look at that from various uh, angles and uh, just talk about security in general. Now, one of the things I thought I'd do, let me just uh, put the server down here for a minute, is uh, I'm going to use a couple of diagrams here. Uh, these are diagrams that were put together by uh, Mac Stadium, uh, which is a hosted uh, uh, Mac Mini uh, co-location uh, place that I actually do some work with and uh, really great service. Uh, but here's a diagram he put together, and this page shows kind of the typical uh, setup, right? You've got a, a home or office uh, Mac Mini that sits behind a router that also sits behind a cable modem uh, that brings in your internet connection. And so everything goes in and out of this chain here uh, to whether you, wherever you're at in terms of at home or if you're at uh, a business or whatever. And so just by looking at this setup, if you've got a home uh, server setup, you've got a firewall built right in here in the router. So the router itself uh, becomes a firewall, and that's why we open and close ports to allow uh, services to get in and out. It's just like opening holes in there to allow things to come through. Otherwise, this will block everything. So that's what the typical home setup is. Now, let me just put this down. For some of you, uh, that might not be your uh, situation. You may have uh, an actual Mac Mini that's hosted somewhere, or maybe it's at a business where it's front-facing. And what that means, you notice there's no router, there's no... Um, modem or anything in the way here. It's just sitting right out on the internet. And so your server uh, then has usually has all of its ports open so that all of the services can get in. But as a result, it's not secure either. And you need to set up a uh, software firewall uh, to be able to protect things coming in and out and use that to basically close ports that you don't want open. So it's kind of the opposite of what we do with a home setup. So I wanted to show you that, let me just put this down, so that uh, as we're taking a look at the firewall, we can take a look at it from a couple of different angles. So let's take a look at the home situation uh, first, if we can. Let's just uh, see how that works. Now, in a home situation, you've got your router here, and we've been opening ports uh, into that router in order to get access, right? This is the airport utility, here's the internet, here's the router, and that's how we've been working with it. And when you go into the server application, if you've got an airport extreme base station, uh, then basically what happens is, is, the, is the server application opens and closes the ports that you need for the various services, and then it communicates with the router and takes care of it. Uh, if you don't, you're opening those ports yourself in whatever software came with your particular uh, router. And so that's how the services have access outside uh, the network. So you've got a built-in hardware firewall. So you really don't necessarily need uh, a firewall at all, uh, but you could run one if you wanted to. And so Apple does provide that for you for your Macs, uh, or you could do it on your client Macs if you were running those as well, uh, so that when they go outside your network, they do have some protection. And so let me put this down. Inside of uh, your Mac OS is a firewall. And so it's found in System Preferences under Security and Privacy, and it's on the Firewall tab, and you have a built-in firewall. Now, this is an application-level firewall, which basically means it allows applications in and out to have access. And basically what it does is it runs, uh, you know, at a basic level some of the functions of a PF firewall. That's the type of firewall uh, that is running. Uh, there used to be... Um, you know, a different kind that was running. Now it's the P uh, PFR. I ble believe it was IPW that was before. Now it's PF. So basically, uh, this is an application firewall that sits on top of that. And to enable it, all you've got to do is, uh, you know, unlock uh, the service, turn on the firewall. And then if you go into firewall options, you can see the different options that you've got. And, and it's pretty simple. The interface isn't too complex. Uh, you've got the ability to block all incoming connections if you want to. Now, if you do that, you also block yourself. Uh, from getting in. So this is kind of a uh, panic switch. If you're having problems with access, you think someone's getting in, you hit that and it blocks everything. Uh, so you don't want to use that too often. Then you've got your services that are allowed through. And these are all the basic uh, services that you have set up already in the sharing tab. So if I just cancel this real quick, let's go over to sharing. 
And so anything that you have set up over here in terms of file sharing, remote management, uh, screen sharing, all of those kinds of things, uh, that stuff here is automatically, if I just come back out and back into the firewall, that's automatically placed in here so that you don't have any conflicts. So server already knows, or uh, the OS already knows, hey, you shared those services in the sharing pane, therefore you're going to want those things through on the firewall. And that's how you set those up so that all these things are going to get through. And then what you can do is add applications uh, to your firewall to allow connections or you can even block incoming connections. So a very simple in and out uh, setup here on the firewall. Uh, and again, if you want to add them, you could click the plus button and it takes you into your applications where you can set that up. Now, down here, you've got a couple of other things. You can automatically allow signed software to receive incoming connections. And so, again, software that Apple has seen the signature on and agrees with and says this is okay, kind of the gatekeeper thing, uh, it'll allow those to automatically receive incoming connections. So you don't have to add them to this list. They're automatically going to come in. So that's a nice feature. And then you can enable stealth mode, which basically means that if you try to ping your server, it won't reply. So that it's there, it's working, but it won't uh, take pings or those kinds of things uh, to see if it's around. And so that's, that's a, something that you might want to enable uh, if, you're, if you're not planning on pinging your server yourself and you don't want anybody else to find it, you would uh, enable that as well. And then when you're done, you just click OK, and then the firewall's running. It's uh, protecting you, it's blocking the things that are coming in, allowing things in and out. Now this would just be an extra layer uh, on top of what you've already got with your router. You really don't need it, but like I said, uh, you might want to set it up on your client machine so that when they go outside your network, uh, they're protected from you know incoming uh, you know in and out type of attacks and that kind of thing. So that's the built-in firewall. Now one more thing that I usually recommend uh, on security, and I use this myself. Let me just uh, put this down. Is uh, is an application called uh, Little Snitch, and so let me just uh, launch the. Uh, uh, little snitch rules here for a minute. Um, little snitch is an application that basically allows you uh, to uh, have an active firewall. And so what it is is it blocks incoming and outgoing connections uh, or allows incoming or outgoing connections. So it's a firewall plus it lets you know when applications want to phone home uh, to try to uh, connect to uh, you know, where, you know, wherever the application came from, uh, a lot of times they have uh, things like ads and that kind of thing, or they want to track you. Uh, you can monitor that on a, 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 uh, an incoming basis. So each time a, a something comes in that wants to happen or go out, you get notified and then you decide whether you're going to accept it or reject it. And so you can set up all kinds of rules for that. And you can see here, this is, uh, this stuff is incoming. This is stuff trying to come into my network. And then the things without this little box are, are uh, connections trying to go outside my network. So you can see all these applications are phoning home at one point or another. And I have to choose to allow, or like I said, I can deny them. So uh, what's great about this is any incoming connection, uh, I can see where it's coming from in terms of IP address. I can look up that IP address, and then I can block it if I don't want to allow it uh, to come in. So uh, there's a lot of different features to Little Snitch. Like I said, this is the configuration area. If you come up to the toolbar, you can see things that are happening. Uh, if I just hover over it, you can see this network monitor uh, that shows up as well. That shows me at any one time uh, what, what things are accessing the internet. You can see this is uploading things. What's uh, coming down would be green. And I can see at any one time uh, what things are accessing my network. So uh, it's a really great security feature. If you want to know more about this, I've done a series uh, on my channel on Little Snitch where I walk through step by step how to set it up. Uh, I would recommend this for home users uh, and especially again for those that are maybe taking laptops outside if you got clients or things. Uh, if you set it up for them, uh, again, you have to have them look at the tutorial because it is a little bit technical. Uh, it is a pain when you get started because you get all of these, you know, flags that come up saying, hey, do you want to allow this or not? But it learns over time, and once you've trained it and got it set up, it really is a, a great piece of security uh, for your uh, machines because, it, get, it again, it allows you to see what's actually happening at any point in time uh, with your network connections coming in and out. So I would, uh, I would, I would recommend that uh, on there. So that's a little snitch. And like I said, you might want to look at the tutorial uh, series that I did on this so you can see how to set that up. So let me just put that down. Now, one more thing. Uh, if you have a front-facing server, that means you need to operate the firewall yourself. And so uh, one more uh, piece of software that I recommend is uh, I recommend IceFloor. Uh, IceFloor is basically a graphical front-end to the PF firewall. 
the PF firewall that's built into uh, your Mac and that is used by OS X server uh, is uh, basically a command line firewall. And what that means is there's not uh, there's no interface that allows you to see what's going on. You've got to be able to work within a uh, terminal uh, to be able to um, you know, pr uh, program it, put in the stuff you want, block things. And it's just not as convenient uh, unless you live uh, inside terminal. Then uh, for you, it'll be great to just kind of bang around with it. But for most people, a graphical interface is helpful. And so IceFloor really does create... Uh, a nice graphical interface for it. Uh, IceFloor is uh, basically shareware, so it's it's free. Um, but uh, again, they ask for support. Uh, I would support these guys because the software is outstanding. So if you get a chance to pick it up and you use it and you and you like it, uh, you know you might want to support these guys uh, with the software. Again, this would be used for a front-facing uh, server where you need to set up a firewall uh, in order to block ports because all of your ports are exposed. Uh, so that's when you would use this. Um, I'll be doing a, uh, I'll do a, a detailed screencast on how to set IceFloor up. I just wanted to let you know that that was there. Uh, but in the next screencast on security, I'll, I'll show you how to configure it and set it up. Now, let me just put this down. One more thing uh, that you might want to consider, uh, and it's just something you can check from time, and, uh, from time to time if you're having issues, is inside server is a logs area here on the side. And what the logs will do is let you know if you're having any trouble or if people are trying to access uh, your network. So if you start to realize some things might be off a little bit, you can check the logs to see what's going on. And if you notice here, there are logs for just about all of the services uh, that you have running, just about all of them. Um, but look at if you look at that list there, you can see all of the different logs that you can check. So if you're having problems and issues, uh, you might think there's a security issue or something like that, you can come in here and uh, take a look at the access logs, take a look at the system log, and see what's going on, and that'll give you an idea of what's happening. So overall, that gives you kind of a, a rundown of the different things that you can use uh, just for your security. Hopefully that gives you an idea, too, of... Uh, how secure your server is. You want to make sure that you're using, um, you know, great uh, strong passwords uh, because if you're using passwords that are easy to guess, if you have certain services exposed to the internet, uh, you leave yourself open and vulnerable there. So make sure you're using uh, strong passwords. And uh, that combined with uh, some of these other firewall type pieces uh, will help protect you uh, from any kinds of attacks or things like that. So that's all I have for this week on uh, server security. Like I said, this is kind of an overview introduction to it. Uh, in the next screencast, I'll give, in, go into a little more detail on IceFloor because they just came out with a uh, 2.0 version, uh, which uh, really simplifies the process and really is a great way uh, to set up a firewall and manage it. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.